Welcome everybody. Uh, see, I think most everybody who's in the audience tonight is either on the agenda or interested in something that is on the agenda, not really here uh, to make a presentation for the council. So uh, we're going to start the meeting. Uh, first part of our meeting is going to be, I guess, kind of devoted to some uh, police, new police activities that we're excited about. So I will call on Chief Chris to introduce our newest officer that we're going to swear in this evening. Okay, Introduce uh, Jerry Culver. So this is exciting. So uh, I really don't have to read this. Uh, so we, I think we all know Jerry. So Jerry's been a police officer for four years. Uh, he recently, uh, for the past two years, has been over at the Nelson County Sheriff's Department. Uh, before that, he was with the Barstown Police Department for two years. Uh, he was with the Nelson County uh, Jail for two years. And he has been with the uh, uh, National Guard for six years yes, and uh, he is a native here of Bardstown where he attended Bethlehem uh, High School and he also played football at Lindsey Wilson and so some of the things that he has on his resume where he was specialized he was uh, took the tactical patrol officer course uh, close quarters tactical course he took the KTOA SWAT course and he was also a uh, PTO trainer so we're really excited to have Jerry uh, back with us. Uh, he has here with him today his beautiful fiance and his uh, adorable baby uh, that we've all loved on him today. <laughs> so, uh, and Jerry, I'll let you, after you get sweet in, introduce your family and say a few words. Come on up, Jerry. We'll, we'll, we'll do the introduction and uh, uh, let you face your family and so forth. If you raise your right hand and uh, do this ceremony uh, ceremony. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky, so long as I continue a citizen thereof, and that I will faithfully execute to the best of my ability the position of police officer according to the law. And I do solemnly swear that since the adoption of the present Constitution, I being a citizen of this state, have not thought of doing with deadly weapons within this state, nor out of it, nor have I accept or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, nor have I acted as a second in carrying a challenge, nor aided or assisted any person thus offending, so help me God. I do. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Welcome. I also want to uh, uh, welcome Jerry to the, back to the department. We're glad to have you. And I know Councilman Shekels and I we, we shared some conversation with you before the meeting and uh, we have a saying in the car business sometimes it's no for now is not no forever so, uh, so, it's, so it's got you back in uh, on, our, uh, on our department so we're really happy about that and we'd like for you if you would take a moment to uh, tell us about your family and uh, we're happy to get back. This is my fiance Paige Hall and our son Emmett. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity. I'm very excited to come back. I'm excited to see the progression the police department has already had and I'm excited to see where it's going to go in the future. So I do appreciate you guys having me back on. I appreciate the Chief and everyone involved. So thank you very much. to welcome a new officer to our uh, department and now I've got some other great news uh, involved in the Barstown Police Department. I'd like to call on Sean Butler who is the Executive Director of the Kentucky Association of the Chief of Police. He's got a presentation to make to us on behalf of their association. Thank you Mayor and Council. It's my pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I'm here to talk about the accreditation program that we have through the Police Chief Association. Just to give you a little bit of background on what this means. You know, a lot of people hear the word accreditation and they're not really sure what it means. This program was started in 1992. There's less than 25% of the agencies in the state of Kentucky that can reach these goals and be able to become accredited. So it's a really big deal. Uh, there's 173 standards with multiple substandards that your agency had to meet. And the, a team of outsiders came in and examined them and looked at them. And these standards are set on what are national best practices and what are good for your people. And it gives your people guidance to give a better product to your residents. 
Um, you know, I can tell you that the chief reached out to me two years ago. They started this process. I think that's about right, isn't it, chief? It was about two years ago. This is not a quick and easy process. It takes a lot of work to revamp your department from the ground up. They have to look at everything that goes on, from your evidence room to how they patrol, to what they're doing with your evidence, to how they manage themselves on the street, to how they manage themselves in pursuits, all the high liability areas, plus many other areas. And, and I want to tell you, they did a great job. And it's, it's really nice to look around the room and you, you see several of them here. And I do want to tell you, I've been doing this for 34 years in one way or another, and it always brings pleasure to me to see a young man from his hometown come back and be sworn in. So congratulations to you, son, and good luck. Um, and I have my grandbaby, who's about the same age as your little baby this morning, a little boy. Uh, so it brings my heart to it. But, but your people did a great job and the enthusiasm they showed just for the process and to want to deliver an excellent process or an excellent product to your residents you, you, there's a lot to be proud of um, i think the chief and her staff did an excellent job the chief it's my pleasure if you step up here at this time i'd like to present you with your first four-year certificate of accreditation um, on behalf of the kentucky association chiefs of police sir congratulations Thank you. this gentleman at the League of Cities a couple weeks ago. As great as this program is on your side of the house is they get now get a 10% discount on their liability insurance. So, and I don't think it's because I do like the League and they're my friend, but it's not because they're benevolent. It's because it's a good program and it helps you all on your liability and it helps what you do. So again, congratulations, Chief, and this has certainly been my pleasure. Thank you so much, Jesus. that are here just step up here for a second because because we couldn't have done it I couldn't have done it without the officers that are in this room and there's some that, that came up here so I just like them to come up here uh, just so I can say a few words assistant chief Joe Seeley pretty much dedicated uh, the last two years with policy writing and being methodical in, in that process and when we came here two years ago and we started this process one of the biggest things that we wanted to show was transparency with the Barstown Police Department and with this process that, that and having somebody that having uh, the people come in and audit our police department and, and setting these standards shows that we're committed to transparency with the Barstown Police Department but we couldn't do it without the efforts of the men and women that are standing up here that serve this community every day and go out there showing respect and courtesy and the dedication and what they do every single day we couldn't have this police department and this and the goals and the standards and, and what we're doing without the work that they, that they do every day so i want to say thank you to the men and women that are up here and to the ones that are out on the street working <laughs> Chief, we just want to, uh, you know, congratulate you and your entire uh, team and uh, thank you for this, uh, pursuing this accreditation. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, not only just going to save us in, in some, uh, insurance, but, you know, it's, it's a testament to the uh, policies and procedures that uh, you talked about when we first uh, brought you in and you put together your leadership group and then you have also uh, recruited your staff and of course you've also trained up a lot of the existing officers who are already here and came in so it's all starting to pay off and I think recognition of, of like this is uh, very appropriate and certainly uh, very deserving for you all because of the hard work that you've done and I want to thank all of the, the department for this hard work and uh, I think it, it shows that the uh, the way you're delivering your all's uh, service to our community. So thank you all and congratulations to all of you. <coughs> a great evening for the City of Barstown Police Department. Thank you. All right, good deal. Okay, um, I don't want to keep the home and Eric here forever. They don't really have an agenda item, but uh, I asked them to stop in um, just to talk briefly uh, some of you may not even know, but most of us did, did because 
but we lose our internet connectivity, the world comes to a, to a, a stop. And uh, so about 9.15, Sunday morning, I would like, I asked them to come here and just kind of tell uh, the council members and, and the media uh, actually what transpired Sunday and what we've done uh, to get, it, what we did to get everybody back up in a very short period of time and uh, fix it going forward, so. Well, I'll, I'll speak to the part I know, and Eric will cover me on the other on the power side. So we had uh, unintended uh, power outage on uh, about 9:06 is when we first got logged in, uh, and that was caused by our primary uh, power supply going down, uh, and then our secondary couldn't support the load uh, that it normally does. Uh, we have a good track record of this device. It keeps uh, at the times that with the same scenario when our primary power fails, it usually does its job and, and continues operating. Uh, but the abrupt uh, interruption in power caused uh, a lot of services and a lot of interruption to how the whole ecosystem works. Um, and uh, as soon as we were knowledge but knowledge of what was causing it we were able to get in there make the repairs call uh, the, the, the folks responsible for maintaining the, the secondary power, uh, power system and they were able to come in uh, identify the, the issue uh, make the repairs necessary that same night uh, so we if that was to happen again we would be covered but uh, it did uh, impact most of all the services except cable TV uh, but uh, everything else, the you know, majority of the, the network was back up in about another two hours, about two and some change. And then, uh, but we worked through uh, to make sure everybody, you know, call back, make sure everybody was up and running and operational uh, within that same day. And Eric, can speak a little more on, on, the, on the other pieces. Sure, uh, just that, uh, you know, we, we try and have redundancy, you know, so we're, we're in, the, in the process of going to a larger uh, generator, but you know, and, and we did have a, a power blink, assuming it was a squirrel or something that caused it, and, and the, between the main power and generator, this, that UPS is, is designed to hold that, and there's just a, it just failed. Uh, you know, so it's not, you know, just want to everyone to know that we have multiple steps of redundancy, and just one of the, the last step um, failed, but you know, so uh, the home guy, guy in, at midnight Sunday night to, to repair it. Um, so as far as we know, everything right now is, is back up and, and hopefully won't happen again. Well, and, and to uh, testament again to you know, having an operating, <coughs> operating uh, system, you know, here it was Sunday morning at 9.06 or whatever, and when I got up here, they contacted me immediately. You already had at least five or six people were already up here working on the issue you had already identified it and uh, you know within two hours and 15 minutes you went from everybody without service to everybody's service was back up uh, it also did knock our phones out and uh, that prevented people from being able to call in and really uh, get any answer it probably wasn't the worst thing for the people on our end of the system but uh, greg and uh, some of the csrs were uh, here and uh, when the phones came up they stayed throughout uh, and it was interesting because as the phones came up the calls kept coming in and then people were actually literally hanging up because they could see that their internet was also <laughs> coming up at the same time so it was like uh, you know but you know again to, to diagnose that you know, and to get it back up and running in two hours and 15 minutes for thousands of customers was uh, excellent work for a very unusual outage that uh, with repairs that y'all made late Sunday night I think would, would prevent this type of outage from happening but doesn't mean we'll never have an outage but this particular type uh, will be preventable going forward so good job and thank you all for uh, all the hard work and Greg thank you and the CSRs for all your hard work on Sunday so thank you very much anybody have any questions of, of the two gentlemen 
If the TV had gone out too, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been all over. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. And home. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is our HRP uh, recommendations, and I will call on the City Attorney Audrey Hayden to uh, read the summaries and the recommendations. Mayor, I, need, I, I probably need to be excused on uh, COA 19 179. Okay, when we get to the vote, we'll go ahead and read all of them and then we'll take them. 179? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. COA 19177, Clarkson Eye Care applicant owner request to install a new sign at 115 South 5th Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed sign. COA 19178, David Mandel applicant owner request to paint his house at 210 North 4th Street. Recommendation approval to paint the house with the following conditions. Conditions, the front door color will be staff approved by the preservation coordinator. COA 19179, First Baptist Church of Bardstown applicant owner request to add a brick base to the existing sign at 315 North 2nd Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed brick base for the sign. COA 19180, Wilson and Muir Bank applicant owner request to install signage at 122 North 2nd Street. Recommendation approval for the proposed signage with the following conditions. Conditions, the final design of the sign will be staff approved by the preservation coordinator. COA 19189, Michael Stewart, applicant owner, request to paint the front door and handrails at 111 West John Fitch Avenue. Recommendation approval for the proposed paint color. COA 19198, Patricia Ciccone Smith, applicant owner, request to add a driveway at 218 North 4th Street. Recommendation of approval for the proposed driveway with the following conditions. Conditions, the texture of the stone and the color will be staff approved by the preservation coordinator. COA 19199, Stephen Vidito, applicant owner, request to install a deck at 110 and 112 East Broadway Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed deck with the following conditions. Conditions that the final plan for the stairs will be staff approved by the preservation coordinator. COA 19200, Stephen Vidito, applicant owner, request to remove a tree at 110 and 112 East Broadway Street. Recommendation approval to remove the tree with the following conditions. Conditions. The screening of the AC unit will be staff approved. The city arborist will be consulted on whether or not the tree can be trimmed and survive or if it needs to be cut down. The city arborist will also give a recommendation on what tree will be planted back if the tree is to be removed and cannot be saved. And the patio peach tree can be planted at the rear of the property. COA 19181, Reggie and Marianne Mudd, applicants owners request to paint the structure at 105 East Broadway Street. Recommendation approval for the proposed paint colors with the following conditions. Conditions, the final colors for the house will be staff approved and submitted to the preservation coordinator. COA 19182, Reggie and Marianne Mudd, applicants owners request to replace the roof at 105 East Broadway Street. Recommendation approval for the proposed roof. COA 19183, Reggie and Mary and Bud, applicants owners request to replace a gate at 105 East Broadway Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed gate with the following conditions. Conditions, the paint color for the gate will match the trim of the house. COA 19184, Reggie and Mary and Bud, applicants owners request to install new lights at 105 East Broadway Street. Recommendation approval for the proposed lights. COA 19185, Reggie and Mary and Mud, applicants owners request to remove a door at 105 East Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval for door alterations with the following conditions. Conditions, the door will not be removed from the exterior view of the house. COA 19186, Reggie and Mary and Mud applicants owners request to install shutters at 105 East Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval for the proposed shutters. COA 19187, Reggie and Mary and Mud applicants owners request to install landscaping at 105 East Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval for the proposed landscaping. COA 19188, Reggie and Mary Ann Mudd applicants owners request to install an AC unit at 105 East Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval for the proposed installation for the AC unit. COA 19190, Eric Shelburne applicant, Shannon Shelburne owner. Request to construct a new building at the rear of 112 West Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval to construct the proposed structure. COA 19191, Eric Shelburne applicant, Shannon Shelburne owner. Request to construct a new building and add siding at 112 West Broadway Street. Recommendation to approval for the proposed siding. COA 19192, Eric Shelburne applicant. Shannon Shelburne owner. Request to construct a new building and add windows at 112 West Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval for the proposed windows with the following conditions. 
condition. Staff approval by the preservation coordinator if any size or placement changes were to occur with the windows on the new structure. COA 19193, Eric Shelburne applicant, Shannon Shelburne owner, request to construct a new building and paint at 112 West Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval for the proposed paint colors with the following conditions. Conditions, the final paint colors will be staff approved by the preservation coordinator. COA 19194, Eric Shelburne applicant, Shannon Shelburne owner, request to construct a new building and add a roof at 112 West Broadway. Recommendation, approval for the proposed roof with the following conditions. Conditions, the final roof sample and color will be staff approved by the preservation coordinator. COA 19195, Eric Shelburne applicant, Shannon Shelburne owner, request to construct a new building and add a foundation at 112 West Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval for the proposed foundation with the following conditions. Conditions, the final foundation material and color will be approved by the preservation coordinator. COA 19196, Eric Shelburne applicant, Shannon Shelburne owner, request to construct a new building and add doors at 112 West Broadway Street. <coughs> Recommendation, approval for the proposed doors with the following conditions. Conditions, the final doors and garage will be approved by the preservation coordinator. Okay, thank you, Audrey. Um, Audrey, you have a, I guess we have a use of a Q's bill uh, on COA 19-179. Oh, I'll step in. Okay. We we'll wanna do that one first and then we'll do the rest of them when Councilman Shackles is back with us. They'll take care of you so uh, we'll let the record show that Councilman Shackles is going to abstain from this vote on COA nineteen dash one seven nine as it relates to First Baptist Church. Uh, can I have a motion then to approve COA nineteen dash one seventy nine per the recommendation of HRB? So moved. Motion by Councilman Hibbs. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Woman Hart. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. <coughs> okay, uh, now we'll do the rest of these, which would be COA 19 177. 177, 178, 180, 189, 198, 199, 200, 181, 182, 183, 184, 185, 186, 187, 188, 190, 191, 192, 193, 194, 195, and 196. All those have been recommended for approval with conditions by HRB. Can I have some motion approved? those with conditions. <coughs> Motion so, Councilman Butler, do I have a second? Second. Second Councilman Shekels. Any other discussion? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, Mayor, on, on the, uh, the Shelburne uh, Granny Suite thing, I just wanted to say first that uh, I'm probably the biggest advocate in the world to have Granny Suites on our properties downtown. I, I think it's a fabulous idea. The only thing I would like to see that we include in this would be at, at the meeting, if you look at HRB minutes, you'll see that uh, they changed the style of the windows, they changed the doors, and the drawing that they submitted does not reflect that. I really think that that needs to be on those drawings. The new window styles, the new door styles, and, and other personal information that they did at the meeting. So the blueprint they submitted is not what is not what was eventually approved, but there are there were some things in there like they, they did approve like there's two over two windows on the drawing, but they approved six over six. But I think the drawings need to reflect that because I think that makes the coordinator's job so much easier if that's what she goes by instead of these notes. And then if there's a controversy and you don't have to go back and research, you have it right there in front of you. So you want to make that a part of the motion to add, a add this as a condition of this approval? I would, yes sir. <coughs> so, so that would be in relation to uh, COA 19 as 190. I think 190 you'll cover, I think. Yeah. 190, okay. Yeah. So do you want to, uh, in our motion then, add one more addition to COA 19-190, which would be going to repeat that? That, that the, conditions that were approved that are different from the drawing that the drawings reflect those changes How such you? as the windows the doors <coughs> the, another door 
I was gonna say maybe it would be phrased that the blueprint that they shall submit a blueprint that reflects the the conditions that were made that were required by the historic review board for approval. Does that make sense? Yes. So make that that's a right. matter of public record that yes. has to contain that revised drawing to reflect the conditions that were made part of their approval. And I think it's going to be very simple. It looks like a computer generated drawing, so it's just a matter. Of, it's going to be very simple. So you have a record that you can go back on to say, yes. do they, in fact, complete the project as per the right. record? As you can see, she, she takes on a lot of uh, staff approval, a lot of staff approval here. So I mean, her, fix, her how do we time fix that going forward, Joe? I mean, I'm sorry? I mean, how do we fix that going forward? I mean, it's just going to repeat itself on the projects, right? Well, we, maybe they'll real, you know, if we do it now, maybe next time they'll say, well, they're probably going to want you to submit a new drawing. I wouldn't want to hold the process updated. Um, that's why I want to go ahead and prove it. I just think before they, well, you should say before they start construction, that the new drawings reflect the changes that they asked for at the meeting. Is that something that we need to change at the HRV level to make sure that that happens in the future, that they include any type of changes on their, on their submitted drawings? Or? That would push them back a month, I guess, because if they come to the meeting and they say, well, we don't think these windows, we would approve these, then all they could do would be, I if guess, You're just asking for a change after the we, fact, that it reflects it on the prints after the fact, might be, the record that's submitted, right? Not for this evening, but it might be something that we can uh, ask for Shea and the board to make as part of their approval process going forward, that when it, before it gets for, in front of us, that those changes will be part of the record that we see. Well, it, I don't know if I'd like to see that, Mayor, because I, I, I would hate to see that process. That means it should be backed up another two weeks. Um, I just think that maybe if we if we said that it was the, the drawings were completed before they started construction, and then then they would be held up on their process. Well, how did that's what they know unless unless we brought forth just like now, just like now, and you want to make this recommendation. If no one said anything to them before, they were restricting over. The, how would they know? If, if this going to be us. Yeah, I know, but, 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 but in order for us to prove it with those conditions, how would they know if we didn't know? If, they, if no one's brought up to them before? I don't think he's asking to change the, the procedure, how we're approving the conditions, because that's all what the HRB puts forth to, the, to us anyway. But I think what Joe's asking is the final record. <coughs> Am I correct? Yes. Final record and final drawings possibly before they start construction. So if, if, you, if we approve this with the stipulation that you put on there, then they go then Rashad or someone goes back and informs him that, that, that these final drawings need to reflect this. Right. Right before they start working and get carried away. I'm just trying to hold their No, no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Really. As long as they're made aware. That's a good point as you go from was it two over two to six over six or whatever four over four to six right. over six yes. and doors and windows and all that right okay all right so we have that motion uh, is there any other discussion I just had a, a concern on one of them that I know of that I was out and about this weekend and one of them has already been done um, so I. Uh, emailed Roche and said is that typical because it seems like I've seen it come up before that we get it to approve and then I happen to ride by and that change has already been made and it's in place and she said it's not typical um, so she was going to make sure going forward that the sign companies know that they can't go and do the work until uh, City Council has signed off on it. And there, that may be a confusion on the part of the sign company. Right. Obviously, if the sign is in the city, but not the historic district, once the sign administrator, which is Roche, right. approves it, and they can go put it up. Right. So. so you're saying this happened between when they had the meeting and now? Or is I it already when before? It I just when know. it happens to some, because if somebody is not compliant, and she'll bring it up to them, and then she, in order for them to be compliant, then they have to submit an application. And it's just kind of going about it fast backwards with it. It does get approved. Well, this was a new sign that was replacing a former business sign. Okay. Uh, and the new sign is there, even though, you know, it hasn't 
come before the city council yet. So. And I'd like to reinforce one more point that Joe's made, and I don't know if Joe may have made this clear, but if the drawings have been updated to, with all the new conditions or the, the new submissions uh, for those changes, that drawing becomes a permanent record that you can go back to if there's any if there any or questions. That, and you don't have to go back through notes and minutes and try to figure out what was approved and what wasn't approved. You have that permanent record on the drawing. Right, that, that way it's less to interpretation of the right. minutes and, and as notes. Joe said, that and becomes the gospel. It's, so it's 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 a probably a bigger issue on new new construction. We don't have that much, but we still have renovations and, and additions. And, but new construction is is a, is a primary concern for me right now, and, and I think some things are, are being maybe missed. Uh, that if we had it on paper. Right. You know, we, we can see it. I think it's a good, good recommendation. So, so can we make clear what is that the motion is? That the motion that's on the floor is the one that we just talked about. That I wrote down the note of what I think we should say. Okay. So, okay. Can you do that? So here's what I. So this is regarding the COA 19190. So before beginning construction, applicants the applicant slash owner shall submit updated blueprints to the historic preservation coordinator reflecting the historic review board's recommendations which were approved subject to the conditions set forth with those approvals. That makes, is that what you're wanting to say? Yeah, okay. Yeah, very eloquently done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the motion that's good. Good. Right. Just say, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better. Yeah. <laughs> that's a legal term. I, uh, I think we have a, we do have a motion and a second with, with some changes. Any other discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thanks for the discussion on this. Um, I was talking to Roche today. Um, <clears throat> I think year to date, we are at 222 COAs. And, uh, Feels like it. <laughs> uh, last year, I think we did like 118 for the year. And we're at 222 in two months remaining. There's been a lot of new construction in progressive town. Prior to the, the last two years, the average year was about 73. Prior to 2017, it took off like a, there was 109, and I might be off a little bit. There was like 109 and 17, there was like 118, 18, and now, excuse me, 18 and then 19, and now we're at 222 <coughs> the month of October. So it was a lot of work going on, a lot of uh, expansion as well as renovation in the historic district. A lot to keep track of, so more to the point of having better uh, records would only help us. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, everybody had a chance to review the minutes for October 8th meeting, uh, so we'll uh, approve them by unanimous consent. And then um, uh, on the uh, on financial reports, the only thing I would just say in, in regards to that is uh, I've asked uh, Greg Ashworth and Councilwoman Hart and Councilman Sheckles to join me on a, as a committee to review the uh, applicants that we're going to get for the CFO position. Greg, that's currently being advertised and it goes to when? November the 8th. November the 8th. So once we get all the final applicants, then the four of us will kind of go through them and narrow down the uh, choices and then uh, <coughs> bring the final applicants in that we want to interview and then make a recommendation to the council. So I appreciate you all being willing to step up on that. Okay, um, I'm going to call on our city attorney, uh, or excuse me, I'm going to go ahead, Greg. You can talk to the classification and compensation plan change. Uh, um, yes, sir. When, um, when the water treatment plant maintenance specialist operator four position was created, it was created for when Don uh, Wilson came back because he was an operator four, so they added operator four onto it. Um, <clears throat> he retired again, and the, the person that took over that position also happened to be an operator four, so we didn't change it at that time. That person has since left, so um, we don't really need our maintenance specialist to be an operator four, so we're just striking that, you know, that part of the title and then change his pay grade. And then on the second reading, um, we'll 
submit the uh, the job description with its changes as well. We just need a water maintenance specialist, not, and we don't have to have an operator for for that position. So that's why the change. Do I have any questions of that? Just just the fact that the last two were operator fours, and so they, we added that to the uh, job description and classification now that it's not required when uh, we're taking that away. Okay, that's the first reading, so we'll take any action on that. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Go ahead and uh, I'll ask the council member to introduce this ordinance and have uh, Audrey read it in some way. Uh, Mayor, I'll do that. Uh, I'd like to introduce the summary of Ordinance uh, B-2019-13, the Classification and Compensation Plan, and ask our city attorney to read the summary. Please. Summary of Ordinance B-2019-13, Classification and Compensation Plan. An ordinance amending and adopting as amended, an ordinance style, an ordinance creating the classification plan and compensation plan. This ordinance amends Chapter 35 Employment Policies, the Classification Plan and Compensation Plan of the Municipal Code by amending the title and pay grade of authorized positions. The amendments and additions reflecting the number of positions, title and pay grade respectively are number of positions, engineering eight, WTP maintenance specialist, striking operator four, grade striking 110, insert 109. All other positions remain the same. This ordinance or parts of ordinance <coughs> Uh, conflict herewith are repealed to the extent of such conflict. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect following publication and summary as required by law. This summary was certified by Audrey L. Hayden, City Attorney. Thank you, Audrey. Um, and then uh, also, then Audrey, if you would give us some background sure. to the uh, first reading on B 2019-14 on the tax abatement. Happy God. Uh, so Gary and I dug into this a little bit. Um, Apparently, some of you may have been on the council when this happened. In 2015, we previously had from 2004 an ordinance that just gave, I guess, blanket tax abatements to uh, new corporations coming in that met certain criteria. And for whatever reason, in 2015, by ordinance 2015 04, we repealed that ordinance from 2004 um, with, I suppose, the intent of taking it up on a case by case basis. And then in 2016, in ordinance number 2016 04, um, we adopted an ordinance which set forth that that we intended to do it on a case-by-case -case basis and it gave some language that the City Council may by ordinance offer tax abatements uh, for a period of five years so long as the business stays for 10 years or it's prorated if they don't stay that long as long as they added 25 full-time jobs as certified by the BIDC so I think you know we have done I believe we passed a, a, a tax abatement relating to personnel uh, tax for Takigawa. We did an identical ordinance to this for Thai Summit a few years back. Um, of course, this is a commitment I understand. I think that we made to Takigawa when they located here, and I think we believed it was going to be done or had been done. Um, and so we want to make sure this is done before they have a tax bill due. <laughs> I think uh, you all recall that when Kim Houston came and spoke to them about as, a, as to us as a prospect. Our typical package has always included, or at least in recent years, uh, you know, the tax abatement on the property tax as well as uh, the percentage on the uh, occupational tax for up to 10 years, I think, on occupational, and then five years on the property. Uh, just, uh, it was just an oversight that we just didn't, didn't re remember that we had to ordain it after we uh, made that part of our formal proposal that that was all sent to the state and approved that, you know, that all those conditions are sent to the state where they get their they know what the local package is <coughs> as well as the uh, state package for their uh, incentives so we're just now trying to clean this up the way it should be so if I could I'd ask for someone to uh, introduce uh, for first reading B 2019-14 the tax abatement for Takigawa Mayor, if I may be in order, I'd like to introduce ordinance number B, 2019-14, uh, an ordinance exempt in Target Gower Corporation from policy for Forest General Real Estate and Tangible Property Taxes for a period of five years. From the time that matter of fact, the activity began. Okay, and then ask our city attorney to do the summary. Ordinance number B, 2019-14, an ordinance exempting Takigawa Corporation America from all city of Barton real and or tangible property taxes for a period of five years from the time that manufacturing activities begin. 
whereas Takagawa Corporation America is located at 1365 Parkway Drive in Forestville, Kentucky, and whereas the City Council may, through Ordinance B 2016-04, abate real and or tangible property taxes for a period of up to five years to induce manufacturing establishments <coughs> to locate within the city, for Kentucky Revised Statute 92.300, subsection 1, and whereas Takigawa shall remain in the community for a period of up to 10 years after its startup, or alternatively to repay a pro rata share of these incentives based upon the duration of the company's location in the community within that period. And whereas Takigawa, in order to qualify for this exemption, has added at a minimum 25 full-time jobs as certified by the Barstown Industrial Development Corporation. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Barstown that Takigawa Corporation America, a manufacturing establishment, be exempted from all city real and or tangible property taxes for a period of five years from the time that manufacturing activities begin. All ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict are hereby repealed to the extent of that conflict. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect following publication as required by law. Okay, thank you, Audrey. And this will be the first reading on this one as well, so we'll take up the vote at the next council meeting. Uh, next item on our agenda, uh, we've got the uh, Minutes from our electric and cable meeting October 8th, and then we have Councilman Nose and Eric and the home, all the heavy hitters from that meeting. Y'all want to well, elaborate I'll, any on that? I'll, I'll have to apologize to Eric and the home, but we should have uh, tried to hit this while, while you were speaking to them earlier, maybe, but uh, instead of making them stick around. but uh, And I'll take the blame because I wanted them to stay in case anybody had any questions. But uh, if we wanted to hit the highlights uh, as far as the electrical projects updates, you know, we've got uh, the 12K conversion, which is, is uh, had to commend the electrical staff, uh, uh, Eric and, and, uh, and Jeff and all of our electrical um, employees have done a fantastic job on this conversion project. Uh, everything's been completed as far as the transformer and the pole change outs on the southern end uh, of the city. Uh, the only remaining work is about 2,000 feet of uh, single phase to three phase uh, structure. So, um, and do you have anything to add to that, Eric, uh, as far as the 12K conversion? Uh, just some, maybe the timing of I'm going to go into as far as the, uh, the apartment substation. Uh, I did uh, speak with KU uh, a couple weeks ago as far as uh, their work on, on the Barton side of the substation. Um, and they're looking at uh, sometime next spring they'll actually have that ready for us to uh, be on that station uh, so we probably won't be doing the actual conversion uh, until early spring uh, when it'll be kind of back to normal uh, that was only kind of as far as update okay um, the other other updates the Munn and track and Lincoln way uh, the DMK development is uh, proceeding and uh, that's the work on the assisted living uh, center at Temple Avenue uh, in Lincoln Way and uh, they're, uh, they're doing a grading change in utility easement which is one of the things they've been having to deal with lately and then uh, excavation and pipeline across that property uh, so that it's work is nearing completion from the Fairfield uh, end to the DMK development property uh, so that's uh, you have anything else to add on that um, North 2nd Street and the Five Star Project, uh, all that excavation work and the underground work has been done, so they're going to be pulling wire. I think they've already been pulling wire for that, so that's really going to go a long way to clean up that, that, that area and that alleyway. Uh, all that overhead power line has been removed. It looks really nice. It's, it's, added a, uh, uh, it's done a lot for that area as far as aesthetics and uh, and safety, you know, a lot of the poles and structure that's out of the way now. So, uh, great job on that too, also, folks. Uh, pole inspection and tagging. Do you have anything to add? We didn't really have anything in our notes about that. So. Um, but I've got more that I'm going to be starting until uh, next 2020. Okay. Uh, but just a little bit out and about. All right. Uh, cable internet construction up project updates in the home. Did you want to elaborate on any of those or? Anything new that we don't have that's in the minutes? Uh, I think everything's covered in the minutes. Okay. Um, that's basically uh, Wi-Fi and usage. You know, they, there was a lot of, um, of talk about uh, during the Bourbon Festival and the Crafts Festival about uh, how our usage uh, really spiked, you know, the city system, the Wi-Fi system, and, and how well that that system worked for the, for the vendors. And that was a huge uh, advantage. 
uh, for them to, to be able to utilize the city system. Um, and it, and yes, yeah, we, have, we have quite a bit of usage. Uh, we were, we provide a separate network for the vendors and separate network for the, the people that are there visiting. And, and, and we had some interactions with them as, as they were signing on. So it was, it was a good um, engagement. And we were able to replicate that in the Arts and Crafts Festival. And we had quite a bit of usage on it during that time as well. Is this the first year we did that? As adding that extra. This was the second year. We did it last year as well. Um, but we're, we're a lot more comfortable with it now. Uh, it was kind of new software for us at the time. We've got some ideas of improving it uh, next year based on some of the feedback we got from uh, committee members. And so uh, it's definitely, I think it adds on to the festival, makes it <coughs> a lot smoother. Well, for the you have a lot of people in one spot. The coverage for solar is pretty poor, and this Wi-Fi <coughs> makes that um, easier to use and available to everybody. Some other construction projects, um, subdivision developments, Cormans Crossing Phase Eight uh, is, is conduit and um, fiber is, uh, projects are underway, and it's going to provide a, a you know high-speed service to that area. Uh, commercial fiber locations are ongoing, Holiday Inn, Fairfield Inn, uh, inside plants, plant maintenance and upgrades. Do um, um, you have anything that you'd like to? Right, so we, we're constantly working on and, and taking into consideration bottlenecks across the network. And so we constantly, uh, at least once a week, review usages and adjust the network uh, based on uh, the traffic patterns and you know, address congestion points or, or slow down that people bring to our attention or, or we see um, on, you know, from our monitoring tools. And so that's kind of, uh, we wanted to bring that council up to date and what we do when those incidents happen and what solutions we have I don't know, yeah, that we can use. Okay. Um, on the internet speed upgrades, I just uh, wanted to touch on that a little bit. Um, the home has provided us a lot of information on our pilot project over the Spring Hill subdivision. Uh, that's been a very successful uh, pilot project and they've, they've gotten a lot of good data and uh, uh, to help us go forward with those speed increases and fiber upgrades to future neighborhoods. So that's been a, that's been a fantastic uh, pilot program. <coughs> Traffic's being monitored and, and you know adjustments are being made according to the needs. You know, there's been they, it's been able to they've been able to pinpoint some of the problems in traffic congestion as far as the internet's concerned in the city um, using that pilot program. So that data has been used um, effectively to help us look forward uh, with those future upgrades to, to other pilot pro programs in parts of the city. Um, there was an update on the FTTH network master plan. So, did you want to speak That's to that? Yes. Yes. So, so we are. Uh, TVC is helping us produce uh, uh, a high-level overview of how we want to go about uh, a rebuilding system with something that that can scale better um, and provide the, and meet the needs of of, uh, uh, of our network in, in the future. And so we share with with uh, the council how it takes multiple. Uh, uh, active devices out in the system and how we divide that into uh, pockets of service in the north, south, east, and west. And how we, uh, we're going to, uh, from the looks of it now, it seems in the dense, most uh, urban areas, we would serve a lot of those with uh, uh, directly from the head end without any active devices or any cabinets out uh, within those areas. And so those are. Um, those those homes and businesses will be served directly uh, from the head end, and, and that seemed to uh, eliminate a lot of you know. You know first, we were removing all the actives from the uh, you know, compared to the coax system. So that's a plus. So serving it directly from the head, we eliminate cabinets and things like that, which are, could be a potential potential failure points as well. Um, so we're still at a very high level. Uh, we're still working through the details, 
the, the, the design has to include the number of fibers required to serve all these pockets. Uh, we have history of uh, penetration in those areas, so we have some data. Uh, we know how many people want our, you know, our services, and so it makes it a lot easier to plan for capacity um, and, and build our design so it can meet all the needs uh, that we might have in you know, the next 10 to 20 years. Nick really done a fantastic job of doing that, looking forward to keep our, our system relevant you know, and, and competitive with other, uh, with other systems. So our next meeting date is scheduled uh, for 4.30 for p.m. on Tuesday, January 14th is the uh, next cable uh, electric committee meeting. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Eric, and then one last thing. Uh, I think I asked you last week about the, hopefully when we convert to this new generator that it's uh, getting close, I think, that we've got, are we about ready? Well, I'll give all the equipment is in. Uh, we're waiting on, on the, the wire to arrive. Uh, the lead time on that was pretty long. So as soon as the wire comes in, we'll be ready to go. We're going to start pulling the wire in and then switch over to it. Uh, but they, they got the, I think the transformer was set today. The switch was set in the last week. So it's just now waiting one more step and we'll be able to get it up and running. Thank you. Okay, and then we, uh, we also had a uh, minutes from our uh, recreation committee meeting. Uh, it was in October, so does anyone want to uh, add anything to the minutes on that or elaborate on them? I know Daniel's not here, but uh, I think y'all covered quite a bit of activities going on with the. Uh, I, had, I had a lot of. A lot of people bringing up an indoor swimming pool in the last two or three weeks. <laughs> it, it doesn't stop. Uh, it would be, I keep telling you, it sure would be nice. <laughs> the way I was answered. I spoke to a, a uh, Weblo group last night, and one little boy came with a index card of questions for me, and two of them were, when are we going to get an indoor pool, and when are we going to get a Chick-fil-A? <laughs> He's ambitious. That was important. To him. Good question. That's, that's a great question. I ran into a Chick Fil A young man last weekend. He he didn't talk about the pool, but he talked about Chick Fil A. <laughs> I, think, I think they have a pool. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, let's see. Then we'll move on. Unless there are any other questions on the uh, recreations minutes. Any council members have any other comments that want to bring up anything for the council tonight? Betty, I know you've got that. Well, yes, we tomorrow. have the meeting tomorrow if everybody's schedule allows. I hope you can make it. Uh, it's at the Knights of Columbus Hall at 12 o'clock, the Rotary Luncheon that they're hosting. Uh, Chief Tom Sinan from Newtown, Ohio is coming down to speak to us about uh, how they started a drug coalition in their community. So uh, if you could make that, that would be great. And I also want to thank Eric and Jeff Miller. Uh, the Welcome to Bardstown sign out by Nazareth is now lit. So uh, I'm going to work on the others, but they got that one done very quickly. So that's awesome. We're doing that with solar, is that correct? Or? That one was the easiest one because it's on our system. So we wired it? Um, so we wired it into our own system, but the other two are not on our system. So we're looking at and doing those with solar. Um, so maybe avoid that monthly cost uh, with Salt River Electric uh, for the minimal usage. So we're going back and forth on, on which would be more reliable versus a more cost effective. Uh, we're looking at doing doing solar for those other two. And just uh, for future reference too, I've got Larry Houndens uh, in discussion with the state on uh, working with a, a location for our next welcome sign that will go on 62 on the west side of town. Uh, we've got two two spots out there, uh, right away related spots, and we're talking with the state on that kind of get their approval. And, uh, probably be something we may budget the next budget. Uh, we don't have this year's budget. <coughs> They're fairly expensive, but we'll see. If we, if we can find some funding and the state lets us uh, put it in 
one of these locations, we'd like to do that sooner than later. All right. Uh, anything else? Any other council members have anything to bring before the council this evening? Okay. Uh, then uh, we just have one cemetery deed uh, from Woody Open. Approve that by unanimous consent. Okay. Now, are there any other announcements? Not then I would then ask for a motion to, for adjournment, please. So moved. Motion by Councilman Shekels. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Buckman. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>